Hello everybody, today I have the pleasure to propose to you this uh, key 7 entitled the middle way, the master key to get a balanced life. Well, first of all, we're going to define what concretely is the middle way and also what is its application and also the reason for being. Well, the middle way, actually, concretely, this is a good balance, a balance of life in general, is a good um, dosing, dosage, actually, regarding life in general. It is absolutely not the preconceived idea regarding the fact that it is a detachment for which you are insensitive, you are not sensitive anymore, and you are detached from life, and thereby you don't participate anymore. Not at all. It is just to preserve you from an extreme to another. Just to give you uh, an analogy, a parallel for you to understand properly. Concretely, you are, for example, driving on a motorway. There is nobody and suddenly you start to um, sleep, okay, to fall asleep. And immediately, it just lasts maybe one second, but it's already very long, and you touch, for example, uh, the, the little wall, okay, so immediately you will gonna compensate and go back, okay, on that direction with the will, and you risk to touch the, 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 the right part, and either you will have an accident or suddenly you will uh, rectify and you will try to align in a normal direction. So basically, this phenomenon is quite uh, common. For this present life, it's happened quite often that some people, for example, they are, for instance, party animal, and suddenly they stop everything, and they shift to, let's say, a quite sanitized life, that to say very, um, let's say, uh, just uh, meditation and so on, the vegetarian and so on, which is very good according to the belief, if they feel it, and so on. But if it's another type of extremity for which they refuse to, to see their other friends, their former friends, uh, if they, they are angry about those, they I'm vegetarian. I respect those who eat meat, for instance. So I don't do proselytism. And this is one of the risks of this. So the objective is to avoid the excess, okay? Excess makes less. And actually, this is true for everything. If you take, for instance, um, nutrition, okay, I'm going to give you a list of the perfect miracle, um, miraculous ingredients, okay, like uh, ginger, like garlic, like parsley, like, um, I don't know, whatever, okay, and you eat tons of it, okay, you eat, for example, um, 20 uh, pieces of garlic, okay, garlic is good for the blood, um, the white, um, uh, the white cell, and so on. But for the blood, generally speaking, and especially for hearts, if you take twenty, you can imagine that uh, it will be a disaster. You will uh, probably have uh, uh, palpitation. You will feel bad, and so on. So, if you take uh, everything as an extreme, it brings the contrary. Okay, so it's the same principle. Uh, lots of um, scientists and doctors, they um, recommend a good uh, red wine, okay, just a glass, which is good for health, hurt. But you can imagine that if you, you drink the bottle and even worse, you eat drink, you much more than uh, only one bottle, uh, two or three, uh, imagine the result. It's negative, of course. So this is typically this. And this is true for everything. The fact to be too much involved in, for example, a friendship or even love is not necessarily positive in that sense that the fact to be detached means that you preserve yourself from um, dependence. Actually, the quest and the main reason for being of the middle way is that you are not forbidden about anything, but you do a little bit of everything, not extreme, and also you preserve yourself from any type of psychological, affective, emotional, and so on, um, dependence, okay? A couple, for instance. Most of people, for um, they try to find something they are missing for the couple. 
and they expect that by meeting someone, they will feel balance. Okay, they miss something in their life and they think the fact to encounter someone, to meet someone, to establish a relationship, it will bring them harmony. It can be partially true, it can be true. But the thing and the risk is two things. The first one, it can be like a crutch, you know, to compensate, okay? So, consciously or unconsciously, you will realize that this happiness, harmony depends on this person. So, if suddenly, for any reason, um, this is death, accident, uh, whatever, this person disappears, it's uh, substantial to your own uh, well-being and thereby your foundation are, let's say, affected. If you have kids and so on, you're not going to suicide because you are losing your partner. Yes, it will be hard, but you cannot afford it. And this is the principle of the middle way. The fact to preserve and also because concretely the first step is definitely to clean up and to, be, to feel in harmony in that sense. I guess you base your own the building of your life, of you existing, like good foundations not on the rock and not on the sand, because the sand is not really stable. So, concretely, all this preserve you, uh, I mean, reinforce your stability. It doesn't mean that you're indifferent and you are not uh, sad if, for example, you break up. It's not this. Or if there is a grief, of course not. But at least you're not completely destabilized. You're not completely uh, uh, demolished. You are sad, punctually, is a normal procedure. It's like when you have, um, you are injured, uh, there is a normal process of uh, healing. It's normal, it's the same principle for death, for breakup, and so on. But, and this is in that sense that it is positive way to, let's say, to preserve yourself from any times of dependence. So, in a certain extent, this is actually, um, it is more fulfillment, brings fulfillment, and in addition of that, you are more entired in a process of life. You know, if we take back the, in this example of couple, um, if you are too much on someone, on the shoulders, and all the time with someone, depending on anybody, because uh, we are we don't have the same uh, aspiration, expectation, and so on. But just as a simple thing, if you become to to think that you're, let's say, uh, vulnerable, vulnerable due to this dependence, maybe you will start to be jealous. And the jealousy is a disease because it's bad for the person. It's like uh, angriness when you're angry all the time. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. It's bad for your health. Is your bad energy and you create your disease, your cancer, and so on. It's a matter of fact, and also it's not super pleasant even for you at first and for your network. So, first for you, jealousy, but even for other people, if uh, you are systematically uh, on the, the, the back on your shoulder, checking the emails, the, 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 the whatever, the, 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 the apps, and so on, it is like oppressing and you, the person, feel suffocated, okay? So it's possible that you affect the true love of this person, and it's possible that this person run away after a while. It is possible. So it's like um, self-realization. You are generating the fruit of your fears, okay? It's principle of uh, emission of energy and so on. It's a matter of fact. But in secondly, it is just a principle of if you, you try too much to, 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 to see, uh, let's say, the resistance of something, if I put all my energy in something supposed to be uh, unbreakable, I'm going to break it. It's normal. So if you push too much the limits on someone, obviously you will lose this person. So you will be affected. So the, the notion of uh, this is a freedom in a certain extent because you're not afraid about anything. You're completely involved in a process of life. And in worst case, okay, you will suffer eventually, but it's tomorrow, it is after tomorrow, it is in few years, is life, okay? And to be frank with you, um, it's like in, I, I'm also a CEO of a company and I've been ripped off many times with, with my employees, um, with uh, some partners and so on. 
and do you think that I change my um, my behavior regarding life? You know, it's like the principle, like uh, Saint Exupéry say, it's a sad thing to um, to reproach to all the roses because only one of few of them hurt you, and it's the same thing. The, if I recruit people and I'm very strict and, uh, and, and pleasant and so on, they're not responsible for the other ones and so on. And I'm definitely convinced that it is, I feel definitely more, let's say, comfortable just to give trust. And in worst case, in a minority of the cases, if I'm ripped off, if I'm cheated and so on, okay, it's fair enough, it's like this. But at least I, I sleep properly and actually i think we are more balanced you know it's the same principle of um, you know um tight wild uh, walker actually if he's stressed he has more chance to fall down and if he feel comfortable he has more he has less chance to fall down it's the same principle when you try to float okay floating in the sea or in even in a swimming pool or Whatever. Actually, if you stress, you have more chances to 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 sink. And actually, if you are comfortable because you just spread your weights homogeneously, okay, so you float. Okay, so naturally, we all have this ability naturally to to spread and to embrace this middle way. Well, let's continue because actually most of people think it is Eastern philosophy, which is a matter of fact, it's true. It's from Taoism, Taoism, uh, Buddhism, and also Hinduism. It's a matter of fact. But in addition of that, it's also Western. It's, um, for example, Greek um, philosophy, especially with Epicure, Epicure, Epicureanism. Concretely, what is it? Is uh, most of people think, but it's wrong, think it's exclusively um, the materialistic, um, let's say, um, enjoyments, which is not true. This is, yes, indeed, you appreciate good food, uh, good entertainment, good sex, good uh, nature, uh, down to earth, let's say, down to earth. But in parallel of that, Epicure uh, recommends it's also spirituality and also the respect of everything, and with a certain uh, dosing, with a certain balance. So he has not been properly understood, or I, I actually <laughs> history didn't. It's like uh, Descartes. Descartes, most of people think is really rational, yes, in his approach, but he was a great mystic, mystic, uh, mystical. But anyway, just to tell you that, um, yeah, it is also part, if you see the Gnosis, I told you already, the symbol of the cross, if we analyze, is the good alignment, concretely, it is harmony of the materiality, okay, with life, my job, okay, it's fashion, okay, it is, uh, I don't know, a banker, it is uh, accountancy, it is this, 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 okay, fine. And, okay, you're in harmony with all this, and in parallel also with the, di the sacred dimension. We can also see differently, because once again, it's a good balance. When I work with people, and I do for almost 20 years now, I always try to see if the person is completely... I don't really like the work alcoholic, okay? Why? Because uh, if they don't have center of interest, if they don't have a balanced personal life, like a kid, like a, it doesn't mean that I not recruit uh, single people, of course not. But in the sense that uh, even the center of interest, do you have patience? Mm, no, no, okay. Do you like series? Do you like painting? Mm, no, okay. So you can consider that even the creativity will be low because it shows that uh, it's a little bit a narrow, uh, narrow-minded vision. And actually, this is this uh, complete person. That's why I told you, uh, Da Vinci uh, said, um, if you want to, to be a complete uh, person, um, study the science of art, the art of science, realize that everything is interconnected, learn how to see and develop your senses. Because that's why he, he had so many talents, because he was not blocked to something. He was an engineer, he was a great um, philosopher, he was a great writer, and so on. And he was a great 
political um, advisors and a great mystic as well. So, you see, we can be more than only a single piece. But it's interesting also to, to compose and to combine different faces, different facets of ourselves. Because life is so huge and so, so great that it's like an honor, it's like to be grateful, to respect like this. So, if we come back to the Eastern way, it's a matter of fact, we can give to Taoism, uh, Taoism, concretely Taoism, it's um, the notion of yin and the yang, okay, it's duality, basically, okay, so this is the wall, the Tao is the wall, okay, and actually it's, uh, it's not static, it is uh, dynamic, okay, there is a movement, okay, if you talk about Tao, you're out of the Tao, okay, so Basically, there is, uh, it's quite known, there is two forces, okay, two polarities, positive, negative, okay, um, feminine and masculine and so on. So, basically, is a good balance in between both. Even individually, we have uh, different polarities, I maybe have 10-15% of femininity by my uh, gesture, by my uh, sensitivity and so on. It's nothing to see with sexuality, not at all, it's just some, uh, let's say, uh, uh, it's a polarity, it's an energy once again. But concretely, everything in nature and in life in general, people and so on, are always through this uh, schema, this pattern of duality and so on. We discuss about that on the first key. But basically, this is a good equilibrium that we can find as well in Hinduism, which is Ida and Pigala, is the same thing. And once you associate properly, it creates a third one that we call Shushuma. Okay, it's the same principle, it's a third part, third party. But let's come back to, so we associate to Taoism, we associate to Hinduism, and also to Buddhism. And for the, the story, actually, maybe you know, but actually uh, the story of uh, Buddha is interesting. Because he's a normal person, he's nothing extraordinary, he's not a prophet and so on, he's just a single man like you and me, except he was a prince, so very rich, and he's like a ivory tower in his uh, palace, and uh, until 29 years old. And um, he, he lived literally in a materialistic paradise. Except that he, uh, he had, um, let's say, a hardship in his life. He's lo he lost his son. So he's completely uh, um, killed, let's say, by the, the sorrow and so on. And he tried to... He wants to escape and he wants to go on a quest of meaning of life, okay? So, he just discovered a rebel word, poverty, uh, injustice, and so on, and he just questioned the, let's say, the, the, the human condition. And he, he tried to find a sense, a meaning of life, and he cannot find. And during six years, he's on a path, and actually, he's trying extreme techniques like um, fasting is, is so he became like this, is, uh, um, is, uh, he lost all his teeth, um, teeth and so on. So he, he, he really in a process of um, very rigorous ascet ascetism, okay? But after six years, when he's 35 years old, he became Buddha, the real Buddha. Buddha means, literally, it means illuminated, or in Sanskrit, or uh, awakened, okay? But before that is simple man of Siddhartha Gautama, Gautama, okay? So, but what's happened for the story? It's interesting. Actually, it's just with synchronicity. He didn't receive, the, 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 let's say, the lesson. He just hear the lesson of the living and the synchronicity of life. And what was? Actually, um, a teacher and the students were uh, doing sitar, you know, the, the Indian instruments. And he said, actually, if your strings are not strong enough, you will never emit any sounds, any notes. And if they are too, uh, let's say, too strictly, um, let's say, uh, uh, stretch, they risk to break. And by these words, the simple words, which were absolutely not addressed to him, he just realized. He realized that he was in the darkness. He was in the extremity of 
unhuman things. And actually, by this moment, he really understood the application, the teaching, I mean, the theory, and plus the application by teaching the middle way. And actually, what is interesting, he has not been taught with the books, with people and so on, just by life. And in a certain extent, by good sense. So, you know, that's why I try to show you through different perspective there is, because it's part of a lot of cultures, because it's good sense at the end. And also because concretely there is different um, path, different ways, but only one uh, middle. And you are at the center of it. And this is interesting to think about that like this. Well, in terms of practice, I invite you to visualize your life like a book, okay, or library, let's say. And or if it's only one book, to see the, the volume one, volume two, okay, we could split like a professional and personal life, okay? You see what is the breakdown in the repartition, the breakdown in between both, uh, maybe 30% uh, uh, personal and 70% because you, you consider your work too much, or it can be a pleasure as well. But just to visualize that, and within it, try to establish like chapters, subsets, and for example, personal life, you, you try to see the parts of uh, the time spread with uh, your kids, your wife, personally only as a wife, as a, and um, also with your friends, with your uh, hobbies, and so on. And you list that and you try to see first, uh, like a state, statements, um, to see how long you spend uh, respectively and what you wish. And then you see if it's according to your balance or if you need a certain, let's say, reorganization. So this is an operational way to apply the middle way because actually the objective of this is this. Because it's not um, to be fun or to be fashionable or to, to, to seem to be intellectual or to have another book in your library and so on uh, full of dust. It's not this. The middle way is really something active and it was true for many centuries and still nowadays. It's really important to be balanced for everything. Well, I really invite you to, to try to meditate on all what we saw try to vo watch several times and eventually to rephrase or take notes, to synthesize and also to try to transmit to someone else to see, to visualize your capacity to feedback and to make sure that you understood. Once again, take it out, what you is not vibrating with it. And in parallel, try also to share the video because we never know. Someone can see and perceive things that you didn't see and the fact to put in common, maybe you will give birth to new idea, new perspective, because it's always like this. The more you awake, the more I do, and the more they are doing, and so on. This is the principle of uh, synergy and also the consciousness that we will define later. Well, as I told you, this is only one key because there is different paths, the middle way, <laughs> but actually all the roads lead to Rome and to home. Thank you so much for your attention and see you soon.